le président. Please be seated. Veuillez vous asseoir. The court is now in session. Today we will continue to hear the testimony of the witness to be questioned again by the prosecution. Before I hand the floor, Mr. Dutchpari, could you report the attendance of the Monsieur parties Greffier, and individuals for the proceeding? Et personne s'était à comparaître. Dutchpari. Dutchpari, Mr. President, all parties to the toutes les parties. case are present except the accused in Sari, who is present in the holding cell downstairs. Et dans la cellule de détention temporaire du tribunal. The accused Ian Sari, through his counsel, requests to waive his direct presence in the courtroom for the whole day proceeding. The letter of waiver by the accused has been submitted to the greffier. Mr. Arthur Wackend, the international council for Kyosem Pond will be present in the courtroom at around 9 a.m. this morning. President, thank you. The president, je vous remercie. Bato kedemra ka kedemra ka ang yembra. Before we continue the proceeding, the Chamber would like to notify all parties that for this week's proceeding, commencing from today, that is the 3rd September 2012 and the following days, Judge Cartwright will not be available and after we consult with all the sitting judges of the chamber, we decided to appoint Judge Fens to replace Judge Cartwright until the day of her return. This is based on the provisions et ce, comme le le of the Internal Rule 79.4 of the ECCC Internal Rule. We now decide on the request by the accused Ian Sari. The Chamber has received the request by Ian Sari through his counsel dated 3rd September 2012 to have his direct presence in the courtroom and instead to follow it through the audiovisual means for the whole day proceeding. Haim Savun, the treating doctor of the accused at the ECCC detention facility, has examined him this morning and observed that Yang Sari is fatigued, uses the bathroom frequently and has a backache, and recommends that the chamber shall authorize him to follow the proceeding from the holding cell downstairs. And as Mr. Yang Sari himself requests to waive his direct presence in the courtroom due to his health, and as observed by the doctor, and that he is physically and mentally fit to follow it through a holding cell downstairs through audio and visual means, and that he can liaise with his counsel directly. The chamber grants the request of the accused in Sarie and authorized him to follow it through a remote means from the holding cell downstairs. And that applies for the whole day proceeding. 
AB unit, you instructed to link the proceeding through the holding cell downstairs for Mr. Yingsari to follow for the whole day proceeding. The floor is now given to the prosecution to continue putting questions to this witness. You may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honours. Good morning, okay, Council, and good morning and welcome back, Mr. Non Sopan. I will first ask you a few questions to follow up on our discussion last week, and then we will move on, as I had indicated also last week, to deal with telegrams in, in more detail. When we were discussing the events of the 17th of April 1975, you described how following victory on that day, a message reached you and you then prepared written documents based on that message for a public broadcast. And you also explained that that particular message was not a encrypted or a coded one. What I would like to do is read to you from a transcript of a broadcast, which is dated the 17th of April 1975, and see whether that transcript corresponds with the message that you helped prepare for the broadcasting unit. Your Honours, this is document E3 slash 118. It is a Fibis extract. Unfortunately, this section is not available in French and Khmer, but we have requested translations. And with your leave, I would read a brief segment from this, from this section. Um, to see whether the witness recognizes the message. Si the English ERN is 00166976. Mr. President, with your leave, I will proceed to read a short excerpt. President Michael Canavas, you may proceed. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honours, and good morning to everyone in and around the courtroom. Uh, this is a report. This is not uh, the actual message that was transmitted. Initially, from what I heard, was he was going to be read back what was actually put on, on uh, what was transmitted on the radio. Now it appears it's another organization, a foreign organization, who purportedly picked it up. We don't know whether this is a verbatim, but now it's being read back in English. We would oppose to this. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Listen up, Council, for Kiss and Pawn, you may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. I fully support the position expressed by Council Michael Canavas. And also, we do not have the original copy of the Khmer language, and it has to be translated from English into Khmer. Therefore, it is a kind of confusion for the witness to follow, and it may not be the information heard by the witness at the time. The prosecution may rely on the content of the document without reading verbatim. Otherwise, it's going to cause a confusion or misunderstanding as the 
witness himself would not have heard it verbatim at the time due to the nature of its translation. So it is not what the witness heard at that time. However, the content could be used without having to read through line by line. Thank you. Mr. President, if I may respond briefly, uh, I would submit that my friend's objections are entirely unfounded. We heard last week testimony by this witness describing a message broadcast on the 17th of April 1975 announcing the victory in Phnom Penh. He confirmed that message was broadcast by the broadcasting unit. Of course, the witness hasn't seen the document before, but in our submission, there is a sufficient and direct nexus between the witness's testimony so far, in other words, his direct knowledge, and the contents of this document. The document is on the case file. It has been admitted. I would recall that Your Honours gave leave only last week for my learned friend's counsel for Mr. Kyu Sampan to read to civil party M. Oon the contents of an official Democratic Campuchia document. M. Oon had never seen that document before. In this case, the nexus is quite strong. Alors, As I said, the witness cas, has described the message. Le témoin, now, le lien est très fort, coming back to my friend's comment about confusing the witness or whether or not the witness sur le sujet uh, will de la recognize the contents, si le whether or not the contents are an accurate transcript, si that indeed is the purpose of asking the witness the question. Exact, it is one of the ways la of Il a pas façon de savoir. Verifying the accuracy of these documents, and I would recall that Professor Chandler, who has decades of experience in the study of Democratic Campuchia, has confirmed these documents to be highly reliable. So I confirmed that the objection is completely confirmed. Rapport FBS sont tout à fait fiables. Je vous suis donc d'avis que le document est recevable. But, uh, President, the objection and its ground is not sustained. Therefore, the prosecution can use the excerpt in that document in order to question through the witness, as that document has already been submitted and put before the chamber, and it is categorized within the E category, so that the use of the content of this kind of category document can be used to put questions to the witness. It is possible to cite the document E3 to pose questions to the witness.
Mr. Lord Sopang, I will read briefly from this transcript. It is dated the 17th of the Mr. President, there is consum on. Le président. President, yes, Allez you may proceed. Consum on. Thank you, Merci, Mr. President. Monsieur le président. I do not object to the ruling. Il ne s'agit pas d'une objection à votre décision. The document that is to be used by the prosecution is not oui. put in the le interface of the court for the proceeding. Des so I am not sure whether the prosecution still relies on, in, si on using this document. La Your Honours, we are acting consistent with your instructions, which are nous, nous to upload a limited number of documents which the parties are certain to use. The document, um, this document arises out of the witness's testimony Ce last week. Uh, we uploaded all of our documents before the witness took the le lien avec document et de la déposition du And as I say, this is a document that um, arises out of the testimony. Uh, it is our Ce submission that the proper reading of the Chamber's uh, directive is that parties must upload les a limited number of documents de that they are certain document, to use, but that that certain does not prevent parties from also referring to other documents, documents if they are relevant um, and if they appear to be relevant as the witness's testimony unfolds. If we can't do that, Your Honours, then our hands are tied. We're unable to adjust as we hear the testimony, and we're unable to test or rather corroborate the witness's testimony with documents that are obviously relevant from the case file. Thank you, Your Honours. Thank you, President. The International Council for Nunti, you may proceed. Good morning, Mr. President. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. That's fine with us. We, we agree with flexibility, but can we have it on record from the Chamber that all parties then will be able to use any relevant document with an E3 number, irrespective of whether or not it's on the interface. I mean, it seems to me that the rules are constantly changing. If, if you're going to sustain or, excuse me, overrule that objection, then we need to have it on record that all of us on this side of the stage are allowed to use any relevant E3 document, irrespective of whether it's on the interface. Council Canavas, you may proceed. Uh, just very briefly, I can understand the prosecution's position, though they have been rather inflexible when the defense tries to take this sort of a position in the past, which we do find uh, rather hypocritical. Be that as it may, the prosecution should have at least notified, should have at least notified all of the parties. Uh, which documents it intended to use that were not on the interface the moment that they made that decision. I think that would be the proper approach. So while I welcome uh, any ruling from the trial chamber in Bien favor sûr, of the prosecution in using uh, these sort of documents, provided that the defense is also accorded the same treatment, I think once parties learn or become aware that they need to use other documents, they need to be uh, distributed, or distributed or not, they need to notify the parties, so at least we can come here prepared. I think that's the whole purpose of having the interface. As long as we have prior notice, it allows us to look, and maybe we won't be making these objections and taking up valuable time in court. Thank you.
the president uh, the chamber would like uh, to hand over to judge claudia fans to address this issue judge fans you may now proceed yeah thank you president um, I would uh, first want to clarify that there shouldn't be any confusion between those rules that govern the regime of putting documents before the chamber and those rules that govern the interface. Having said that, this problem is an interface problem because the document has been put before the chamber. The interface, or the idea behind the interface, is to provide notice to all the parties, early notice. Obviously, depending on the development of proceedings, some, some flexibility is necessary in the application of these rules. Having said that, um, in this very case, where the witness will be available tomorrow, and no notification has been provided so far. The chamber rules that the prosecution should use these documents and ask the questions that are necessary tomorrow. Because then parties have been put on notice today and can prepare. Thank you, Judge Fens. And, um, I should uh, inform the chamber and the parties in accordance with that directive. Um, we will distribute uh, at lunch um, uh, approximately four or five documents, uh, all of which arise from the evidence we've heard thus far. Mr. Non Sopang, returning to your testimony. Another aspect of the communications which you described last week is the use of the Morse code. That's M O R S E code. I want to just confirm briefly my understanding of how this code is used, um, or perhaps I should ask you the question and allow you to explain it to us. Um, how was it that Morse code was used in transmitting messages between the centre and the zones? Response. The transmission of the messages from the center to the zones had to majorly Pour transmettre des messages go through other means rather than the Morse code. Itself. Faire appel à moyens, there were mainly codes just codes. However, plupart, with regard to the basis, codes. if they had some Néanmoins, open sources of information, then they would use the most uh, means of uh, transmitting the messages, messages concerning the victories, for example. Code Morse pour des messages. Ces messages Thank you. Les par Looking at those transmissions Merci. Uh, that were done other than by en use en of the Morse code, you explained to us last week that a, a, te a written text would be coded into a series of numbers uh, and that would then be transmitted. For those of us who are not experts in, in this field, could you explain how it was that K18 would transmit those numbers to the zones, what means did they use?
response Repulse. with regard to the telegrams that had to be sent in, indeed, I refer the to the coded uh, telegrams. They would uh, be transmitted to si a, a K-18 that transmitted to each target location, the location of the target uh, recipient stated on each of the uh, telegrams. For example, we would like uh, K-18 to transmit uh, the messages to the East Zone. Then, on the message, there would be a 75 as the code for a recipient for the East Zone. K-18, upon noting the recipient code uh, would be managing to ensure that uh, the messages would then be transmitted to uh, the location accordingly. And they had to communicate with that area so that they could be on the uh, on air or radio communication so that Cette the message could be transmitted. And, and just honing in specifically on how the transmission occurred was it used was it by the use of a of a telegraph machine that would transmit tones which would then be interpreted on the other side as letters or numbers or was it some other type of transmission response during that uh, period of time there was no any modern machines or devices rather than they used uh, what we call modern. the rap no the ha the manual winding Autre device un dispositif manuel and then the message would be sent in the form of like titita, which represents number one. And uh, this is the way sound could be communicated uh, through their uh, tapping uh, device. Uh, sometimes uh, it, uh, there were letters, uh, sometimes there would be numbers uh, that could be transmitted through this um, uh, device. Thank you for that explanation. L'accusation. Merci pour cette explication. Are you aware whether there was in place any system to confirm or verify that a message has been received. For example, if a message is transmitted, as you just described, from K18, was there a way in which the zone could confirm back to K18 that it received? Il y avait un moyen permettant à la zone de confirmer à K18 la bonne réception du message. Response. Réponse. Concerning the telegrams communication, they had their own frequency la communication and de for, for communicating. And K-18 also obtained this document K18. when the, uh, the zone had the same document that they could communicate because they even sent some kind of secret uh, signal to ensure that the, the other end of the communication line would be the right person 
pour s'assurer if for example we send the code a F B then uh, the partner would si confirm uh, with some kind of signal à l'autre bout il devait y avoir une confirmation and uh, another Grâce example is that if we send the code like a F B to si that person and then they did not reply or reply with some kind of ar uh, irrelevant signal then we believe that they were not uh, the people uh, we intended to send the messages to. Bon Thank you for that explanation. Accusation. Merci de cette question. You worked in one of the offices associated with these communications. Could you describe for us the level of discipline that was involved in performing your work? Response. In our group, in, in particular, the telegrams decoding unit, people were of good discipline. Nous étions très disciplinés. And everyone was very committed in performing their tasks Tout meticulously. So I can say that uh, everyone was really well disciplined uh, and we had to perform our tasks in accordance with the principle laid down by Anka. Thank you. When you described the various offices that were um, responsible for performing various tasks in transmitting and receiving telegrams last week, you described the unit at K1, you described your own unit, and you also described K18. I want to ask you about another telegram translation office which you mentioned in your statement. Your Honor, this is found in E3-64, the witness's first statement. And the relevant ERNs are in Khmer 00328035, French 00411703, and English 00334053. I'm going to read this passage to you and see if you can give us more information, Mr. Sepang. Question. You said that Ying Siri had his own working place. Were there any telegram translators at his place? Answer, Ying Siri had his foreign affairs ministry, so he had his personal telegram translators. What else can you tell us about this telegram translation unit? Do you know where it was based and how many people worked there? Où se trouvait ce service et combien de personnes y travaillaient? Response. Uh, 
With regard to the telegrams communication at Mr. Ying Seri, I am afraid I do not recall or whether there was any such uh, telegrams decoding unit uh, at that office. Tel service de décodage de télégramme à ce bureau. So we should correct your prior statement then that you didn't know whether there was a telegram translating unit at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Would that be correct? Vous dites donc que vous ne savez pas s'il y avait un service décodant les télégrammes au ministère des Affaires étrangères. Est-ce exact? Response. I'm, I'm not Réponse. sure on this. That's why I am not uh, testifying on something that I'm not clear. Pour cela que je ne tiens pas Thank you very much. Réponse, uh, si je ne suis pas and just Accusation. one more office Merci that you have discussed previously with the co-investigating judges, and this is Office K7. Could you describe for the court what Office K7 did? Pouvez-vous nous dire ce que faisait le bureau K10, euh, K7 But men, men got up. Response. It is not K17. Réponse. It is K7. Ce pas It le was K17, the place where there were messengers to receive Il y avait des messagers. mails and visitors from other parts of the provinces. Ainsi que des visiteurs venant des provinces. Was K7 also Question. used to send messages out to the provinces. Response. I do not know for sure Réponse. about this because uh, I didn't work there. Je suis pas sûr car je pas. Thank you. Accusation. I'll just, uh, following on from your earlier description of the office, um, I'll read also from your statement. We're still on E3 slash 64, Khmer ERN 00328029, French 00411698. In English, en français, zero, zero, et en anglais, three, three, This is the description you gave. The messenger unit K7, located north Unité of the royal palace, K7 and Prum was the chairman. The role of K7 was to receive domestic guests from provinces and to deliver general mails to every place where any guests wanted to contact K1. They must first contact K7. I do not recall who the deputy of K7 was. Prum was the chairman of K7 until the Vietnamese arrived. And then in the next paragraph, Ensuite, question, paragraph how was the relation between K7 and K1 
their relation was that if anyone wanted to meet with K1, he or she must arrange it through K7, and the procedure was the same for sending in or out letters. So I just want to make sure that we have the role of K7 correct. Um, Am I summarizing your statements correctly if I say that all male and personnel who were to come in uh, into K1 needed to first go through K7, which was run by Prum? Dans le chef était Prum. Response: Yes, you are. Réponse: Oui, okay, c'est exact. I, they would not be allowed to access K1 directly. First, uh, there must be a telephone call to Bon office before anyone could be sent. Uh, for K1. Avant d'envoyer qui que ce soit à K1. Thank you. L'accusation. Merci. Do you know anything about the distinction between the types of messages that would be delivered by telegram? That is through K18 and then the, the decoding offices and those messages or letters which came through K7. Do you know why at, at times one may have used telegraphic communication and at other times uh, letters were sent through K7? d'avoir euh, recours à des courriers qui étaient envoyés à K7. Response. Réponse. I do not know the details of Je this. Je ne suis pas au However, courant des détails. The reason why à ce sujet, communication had to go through K7 la raison pour laquelle des communications uh, devaient was that par K7, uh, at times there were requests for some que parfois, materials for rebuilding il y avait des de the basis. And if the requests were not uh, a kind of urgent request, si then they could uh, do so through mails. However, if there was a secret communication to be Cependant, made, then secret codes secrète, uh, would have to be transmitted alors il le through the telegraphic uh, communication through uh, K18. And uh, if the matter was of strictly confidential nature, they did not need to go through telegrams or messages. They had to come in person to the center. Just not following on from that uh, answer, Question. do you know who it was that came in person to meet the center? qui venait justement au centre pour les rencontrer ou remettre les messages en main propre Response. Réponse. I do not um, know clearly about this because it was part of Je the ne sais pas très bien secret matters by the Cela center and I was tasked only with coding and Moi, transmitting telegrams. Et à les telegrams and I 
cannot uh, respond to you concerning who would uh, be meeting uh, who in person. I just want to see if we can explore that a little bit further and see if your statement might refresh your memory. Returning to E3-64, Khmer ERN 00328035, French 00411703, and English 00334053. And this was a brief discussion on this issue. Question. Which zone telegrams did you translate? Answer. All zones. They included the substances on building dams and canals, requesting materials, internal situation, and any events that took place at the bases. As for the messages about the reports on the enemy situation or treason, the Zone Committee came in person to meet with the Central Committee. Is that an accurate summary of your statements to the co-investigating judges? that it was the zone committees that would come and meet in person with the central committee. Response. I stand by that statement because most of the time for the internal affairs they were transmitted through telegram were to a minimal, and that I mostly did not know about it. Transmitted the most possible by telegram, so I was not aware of this matter. For the internal affairs, sometimes it would not be transmitted through a telegram. Sometimes it communicated through a person who would come to the center. Are you able to tell us how you knew that zone committees would come to, per, to report or discuss internal matters with the center? There are various means for the communication with the center. We use different ways of communication with the center. If someone wanted to meet with the center, that person had to go through K7 first. My question is just how it was that you that you knew this. Is it something you saw or experienced or something you discussed with other people? Regarding the meeting with the center, Sometimes it was made through the secret telegram, for example, a request made with this brother or that brother at a particular location. Sometimes a telegram was sent in advance to transmit such a request. And based on that, I concluded that for internal matters, they would, do, they would not do it through a secret telegram. It would rather meet in person through a request, through a short transmission by an advanced telegram. And that's how I learned about it. Thank you very much for answering that question. Merci d'avoir répondu à la question. 
were there any invitations that came from the party centre for y a-t-il eu Zone des committees to come invitations envoyées par le meetings. centre du parti pour que les comités des zones Based qui ont participé à des réunions, toujours sur la base des télégrammes que vous avez vus I came across uh, some of the telegrams regarding the invitations to the zone cadres for meetings. They were in uh, sort of messages through the telegram. C'était de courts messages envoyés donc par telegram. For instance, a national meeting at the Borgila, the message was sent to various zones and sectors through short telegrams. And sometimes uh, messages were sent through for the Parfois, study sessions at Borgila at, at the party school. À à du parti. Do you recall who Vous souvenez -vous signed qui those messages, signé ces messages or on whose behalf they were ou, being sent. Ou qui ils étaient envoyés. Réponse. I can recall that the person who has the authority que la that a message has to be transmitted to this particular individual or this comrade, it was Mr. Pond. C'était Monsieur Pond qui avait l'autorité de dire que tel message devait être envoyé à tel camarade. Do you recall at all? Question. Vous souvenez-vous? At the end of each telegram, whether there was si the name of a person or an office, il y avait le nom which ou was bureau, the author of the message, qui signifiait l'auteur de ce message. In general, its message has its heading and the ending. The heading was used based on its location. Sometimes it would say to respect it, rather this or that, or to eight seventy committee, to beloved brother. That was the general form and use. C'était la formule habituelle sections. que différents, différents services utilisaient. And as for the ending, Pour ce qui est du pied de page, il y avait la date, la date, la signature de la personne the qui a envoyé le message. I cannot recall them all Je ne me souviens pas de tous les noms, parce que ça a été tellement de années ago. Très... So I could million. not recall actually who actually signed the, the messages, messages. But in general, that would be a message would contain a heading and an ending part. Un tête et un pied de page. Uh, Question. Question. Uh, 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 Do you 170. recall whether any of these invitations to meetings vous -vous were si ces invitations à à des issued or signed by the 870 committee? Ou par le comité 870. I can remember the coding Je used for 870 que l'on utilisait pour désigner 870 so usually for the 870 committee Et they would use that number that is the secret code which is 870 le and numéro that code secret to était 870 ce qui faisait référence au centre thank you i'd like to now move on to discuss le a number of documents with you, Mr. Serpang, and 
I did promise last week that we will not discuss coding promis la semaine dernière in que great pas detail. Aller dans les détails du so I'm going to keep that promise. Donc, euh, but tenir ma promesse. as a way of assisting everyone in understanding the basic Mais operation of que tout le monde coding and decoding, decoding. I'd like to uh, show you a document which was attached to qui était un document your first en statement. De votre premier procès verbal. Mr. President, this is document D200 slash 3.8. It is a, a table uh, of 100 squares and it was attached, as I said, to the witness's first statement. With your leave, I will give the witness a hard copy in Khmer, and then we can also project that on the screen for the parties and obviously the judges and the public. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Mr. President, I think we have a President, yes, you may proceed. Court officer, could you deliver the hard copy document for the witness examination? Mr. Sepang, if I understand correctly the statement, and this table was drawn by, by you during your your interviews. Is that correct? Tableau lors de votre entretien. Est-ce exact? Yes. I personally oui. made this table. Moi qui fait. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. With your permission, we will uh, project it on the screens as well. Thank electron. you, Mr. Sopang. Monsieur. Would you be able to give us a very basic uh, description of how this table is used to code a word, for example, into a different um, sequence of characters? Le transformer dans une série de caractères différents. This is called a table of 100 squares. It is used carrés. for the encryption of the characters. Le this means it is used to encrypt the normal Il character into a coded number. For instance, for a plain message for letter A, chiffre, of course, donc, par exemple, A ou con, that is for us to encrypt it, Donc pour then that letter A letter would a be encrypted into a coded number. Recevrait un numéro de code. If you look at the letter A on La the table of 100 squares, a. that is it next oui. to number zero. On voit est à côté du, nom, du chiffre zero. So for the alphabet or the letters in red, they are the original letters or numbers. So if we want to encrypt letter A, Donc, si veut we need to encrypt it by a, using 0, 0. Utiliser zero, zero. So 0, 0 represents letter A, zero, zero or A character. Le character qui correspond. Another example, if you want to encrypt a number, let's say number 9. Par exemple, si on veut maintenant chiffrer le numéro 9. Number 9 on the horizontal square, it, it falls under number 8. Ça tombe sous la colonne 8. And on the vertical line, it's number 1. Et la ligne 1. My apology, I confused. 
Pardon, je, je... In je fact, the vertical box was used as the, the start of the number, for instance, for number 9, or number 9, that is du code number 1, and on the horizontal line ligne. is number 8. So 18 represents de la ordinary 9 number, pour le chiffre 9, le code number 9. 18. So then to summarize, each character Donc, afin de résumer, in the table is assigned dans ce tableau, a à code based code. on a horizontal number and a vertical number. En se fondant sur le numéro de la ligne et le numéro de la colonne, de la case à la, qui lui correspond. Bad game. Réponse. Yes, that's how the reading oui. was done. The vertical is the main one, and the horizontal is the one which will be annexed code. to the vertical one. So the reading starts first with the vertical line. Donc on commence par le numéro de la ligne. Thank you. Um, Je vous remercie. I want to um, refer to your statement um, in discussing this um, this table, uh, and you indicated, Your Honours, this is still E3 slash 64, Khmer 00328046, French 00411713. And English zero zero three three four zero six two. En français zero zero quarante un dix sept treize en anglais zero zero trente trois quarante soixante deux. I had to call the parties at the other end of the line. Je devais appeler le parti à l'autre bout de la ligne pour les convoquer une réunion et expliquer les questions techniques. Je leur ai ensuite remis une copie de ce tableau. If I can ask you first. When was the first time that you called the uh, people working at the other end for a meeting so that you could explain to them this table? Pour les convoquer une réunion afin de leur expliquer comment fonctionnait ce tableau. Regarding uh, the Réponse. table. In cases, in cases that there was uh, nothing new or nothing complicated, there was no need to call the other end mm. and to explain it to uh, that person or party. However, in other cases, that is in regards to the cas, other end, if the people there si were new, Il y avait and did not have experience in using the table, la ligne et il avait, il pas then I would send a request for them to come and to explain je to them. Leur envoyer, je les convoquer pour pouvoir leur expliquer comment ça fonctionne. If I can just uh, in, insist on that um, question, do you recall the first time that you, that you called people in for a, for a presentation? Que vous avez convoqué des gens pour leur faire une présentation sur le tableau de chiffrage. Réponse. There were not many instances. Cela n'est pas arrivé très souvent. Le cas à la nord-ouest, that is in Mondolkiri. Il y avait un cas dans le nord-ouest, au Mondolkiri. Rather north-east, that is in Mondolkiri, as uh, they were not experienced in using Et eux n'avaient pas l'habitude de table. Le tableau. So I invited them in and uh, explained to them invité. about how to use the table and how to encrypt an ordinary message into an encrypted message. Le tableau pour chiffrer les messages. As for other zones, pour ce qui est des autres zones, they have their own human resources and experience. Leur propre personnel 
Et Since uh, during the war time, et avait l'expérience aussi. So I rarely called them in for presentation regarding the table. If I can ask you about the uh, people from Mondulkiri, do you recall by any si je in, any chance um, who who those people vous were vous qui étaient ces gens and where Mondulkiri they were working? Et où ils travaillaient? I used to explain to those uh, from Dolokiri. J'ai expliqué. Actually, a female youth was sent. Aux du Mondolkiri. En fait, ils avaient envoyé and une from Dolokiri, and I du explained to her regarding the use of the table at office K7. C'était au bureau K7. And K7. after she became familiar with its usage, she returned Mais to her base. Une fois qu'elle thank a, you. Une fois qu'elle savait comment s'en servir, elle est rentrée dans sa base. And if just before we leave the encryption. Table. You commented last week that with very confidential messages, you would code them several times, if I recall correctly. When you did that, were you using this Square table as the starting point. Utilisiez-vous ce tableau de Or was there a different case comme point de départ ou y avait-il une autre tables. procédure pour le chiffrage des documents très confidentiels? But, uh, Réponse. Regarding the technical aspect, it is uh, rather complicated. Pour cet aspect technique, c'est assez compliqué. It cannot be summed up in a short period of time. Je ne peux pas vous le résumer rapidement. And it requires uh, quite a long time for you to understand. C'est très compliqué et cela prendra beaucoup de temps à comprendre. If we use this square en utilisant table, le tableau de Sanpari, it cannot Saint get Paris, turned into a final on encrypted on ne peut utiliser message ce tableau for them to euh, transmit yet. Euh, en faire un, For an, un message chiffré envoyé tout de suite. Les messages message, confidentiels devaient être layer. chiffrés And also plusieurs fois. For the that we Quant au message confidentiel que nous recevions, we need to compare it through our confidential list. il fallait les comparer à la liste confidentielle. And then we have to look through which part is confidential. Ensuite, voir quelle partie du message était confidentielle. Et il fallait la déchiffrer. First, une première fois. For example, for a name Donc, exemple, of a person or a name of a location. Ou endroit. We need first to use that confidential list. Il fallait d'abord utiliser la liste confidentielle. For example, for the location of K7, there is a confidential list for K7. Il y avait une liste confidentielle propre à K7. And within the K7, we have some coded numbers that can be used just to identify K7. Pour K7, il y avait so des first, we euh, noms de code qui faisaient référence à K7. Donc, il fallait d'abord chiffrer coded message le message ordinaire, le message codé, en utilisant leur And liste confidentielle. Et une fois que cela a été fait pour le corps principal du texte, then we would Use that text on utilisait ensuite to be ce encrypted texte again to on on this square table. en utilisant le tableau de 100 carrés. And once all have been encrypted into Une fois que tout numbers, était codé et transformé en chiffres, it, it would not be sent immediately to pas K18. Tout de suite à it would be encrypted at another layer une fois de plus. With, other, with another number, encoded number. Un autre code de chiffres. So, in, to sum up, 
Donc, on there are three layers for the process of encryption in order to make that message become final and that can be sent for transmission. So three layers Donc, of encryption. Trois étapes de codage. What type of a message Question. would require Et such a de high degree of encryption? Une, un codage si sophistiqué? But, uh, the very confidential message les messages hautement confidentiels was that in relation to the journeys made by the cadres, exemple, that kind of trip of journeys would cadres. fall into this category. Ce genre de and uh, secondly, it was the internal affairs. En deuxième lieu, il y avait les affaires internes. That is in regard to what happened at various bases. Ce qui s'était produit dans les différentes bases. That kind of situation would fall ce and type de message under this category était as aussi well. Classé très secret. And in relation to the open message or un in or unencrypted message, there was very very few. Il y en avait très peu. If uh, it is indeed used, it would be used in plain Morse code in the Khmer character. C'était simplement en fait euh, un message envoyé par code Thank Morse you. dans son alphabet Khmer. If we can move on now to Question. look at one document that you have montrer. already discussed with the co-investigating judges. Your Honours, this is document E3 slash 513. It is a, a telegram which was discussed by the witness in his first OCIJ interview. With your permission, I will give the witness a hard copy and then we can proceed to ask him some questions about it. Question number one. Question number one. Question number one. Yes, you may proceed, court officer. Could you deliver the hard copy document for the witness? Thank you, Mr. President. And if perhaps this document could also be rejected on the screens for the benefit of uh, everyone else. Mr. Sopang, if we can start by looking at the format of this document. In the, at the top of the, the, the page, we see Telegram 54, and then immediately below that, Radio Band 290. Could you explain to the court what, what those numbers meant? But the response. As you said, the uh, telegram dit, number is le numéro du number 54. 54. And 290 represents the, the CK, or you can say that telegram consists of 290 CKs. Because for each CK, there will be five characters. CK dans le Telegram. Et pour chaque CK, so il y a you can caractères. say that this Telegram consists of uh, 290 CKs. Il y a 5, 290 uh, CK And it is easier for the decoder to understand this. Et c'est plus facile ensuite pour le décodeur so de once again, the Une fois de plus, the CK is the, the CK number of the character. C'est le nombre de caractères. 
Thank you. If we look at the uh, who the the line that uh, contains the address to whom the telegram is um, directed, it says to respected brother. Could you tell us who that is? To respected brother, the word respected brother here is uh, Paul Pot. Respected frère, c'est Paul Pot. The word brother here used to refer to Utilise the party secretary, that is brother number one. Le frère pour faire référence au secrétaire du parti, c'est-à-dire le frère numéro un. In your statement, Question. at Khmer ERN. 00328041 French 328041 en français 00 00411709 and English 00334058 You discussed the handwriting in the top Left hand corner. De la note but perhaps that could be shown on the screen. De, and you said vous avez dit that the handwriting, which says Grand Uncle Nuon, might be that of Tay, because Tay also had the right to manage that. Le droit de, de gérer Do ça. I surmise correctly that this is Tay, the deputy of Pon, that you're referring to? auquel vous faites référence. But, but we got mad. Yes, yeah. you do. Réponse, oui. This is the statement I made. C'est ce que j'ai dit. Now, this telegram deals with the situation of, of enemies and describes the arrest of one individual in particular at paragraph 3. And I'll just quote that, the beginning of that paragraph. The issue of the situation inside the party, Comrade Sot, chairman of the repair factory, has committed immoral acts with a woman. Now the arrests have been made. Both the man and the woman have been arrested. This comrade was previously implicated in the confession of the traitor A. Chuan. When you were asked about why this type of telegram would have been sent to Noon Chia at the same ERNs that I gave earlier. You said anything involved with the internal situation and the violation of moral codes, they had to contact Noon Chia because Noon Chia was related, correction, because Noon Chia was in charge of the people. Is that an accurate summary of your statement, Mr. Sopang, that telegrams which dealt with violations and the internal situation would be sent to Mr. Nunchia? Response. At that time, I was not able to know this because Pon was the Je one who oversaw all of this. But you asked me to help analyze on this. And based on my knowledge, the reason the message had to be sent to 
omnunchia because he was in charge of social affairs and culture. So when it comes to the violation of moral code, uh, it should be Uncle Nunchia who would be the person who whose uh, uh, the message was sent. That's my analysis. The President, uh, thank you, Mr. Co-Prosecutor and witness. Uh, it is now appropriate moment uh, for the adjournment. The Chamber will adjourn for 20 minutes. The next session will be resumed by 10 to 11. Court officer is now instructed to assist the witness during the adjournment and have him return to the courtroom when we resume. Some change culture.